All right, so this video is going to be a response to Stan Schrank's video responding to my problem with the big three video. So I just wanted to basically say before I even get into anything of my own, his video is great. I'm going to put the link in the description. It was very thoughtful, very long and very thorough. Um, overall, I really enjoyed it. There was a lot of things I agreed with, a couple of things I disagreed with, and he did a great job of admitting maybe when he should be asking a question instead of pretending to know what he was talking about, and I'm going to try and do the same exact thing here. So, to start everything off, he did say that he's very attached to the barbell, and that's a disclaimer for his video that he put in there. I can 100% respect that because I'm kind of the same way about my own lifts. Um, so I get I get having your own opinions, I get having their own your own things that you like to do. I think that's very important, and that's kind of what you need to have a discussion. With that being said, he can agree with other people's viewpoints, and I think that is crucial, and I'll get into that in a second here. But I think we can all agree that having an open mind is better than being stuck in your own ways. This is something that a lot of people learn over time. Just because you're right doesn't mean someone else is wrong. That's going to be a recurring theme that I have on this channel. So my next point here is true advanced and humbled lifters tend to have that mindset. You kind of go through phases where the first thing you try works because you're a beginner. You kind of get attached to that, or maybe you hit a plateau and then you hear somebody else give you some advice and it works. And now you are attached to that. You swear by it. Everything else is dumb. That is 100% right. Over time, with the more methods you try, the more plateaus you go through, and just the overall experience that you have lifting yourself and talking to other lifters, you really tr truly do kind of gain in a pretty open mind with this stuff. So advanced lifters, the best of the advanced natural lifters, you'll see a lot of them tend to have this mindset in common. The first point that he makes in this video that I want to respond to is he did mention that 2016 is kind of when he got a little bit deeper into lifting or at least into YouTube fitness. I want to make sure I'm quoting you correctly. I didn't take direct quotes, but I did try to paraphrase as best as I possibly could. So he's basically saying that 2016 was that generation that he kind of got into the YouTube fitness with, and it was very barbell focused, especially on YouTube. And this created a generation that started generally viewing barbells as superior to other methods. And I want to say to this that I am from the same generation. That's kind of when I started lifting, at least learned some more stuff online. This is when like power building really started to form. And I'm not anti power building, but I've got a couple points here that I do want to get across. So I'm not going to name drop, but that's when I started getting further into lifting around that time, definitely that same generation, as I just said. And I think we can all name a couple influencers, influencers that preached this barbell method that were training for hypertrophy. And a lot of these individuals were also taking steroids of some type. So that's definitely a, for a future video. But yeah, either way, that's a little to, to get off that side tangent. I'll get back to my points here. I think when we presented the idea of power building initially, it was a great thing for a lot of lifters, and I still tend to think that. However, I do think the generation that started with that style of lifting has lost touch of the foundations of bodybuilding and powerlifting, and the line between the two has really been blurred. And Stan Strength actually did an incredible job of going into that a little bit, and I can definitely appreciate that. One of the next points he makes, and this is a direct quote, I like being able to lift heavy ass weight. And I get that. I 100% can understand that. And a lot of people do. Not everybody. And that's kind of why I have my channel with my points. But a lot of people just love to pick up a heavy barbell. It's just how it is. That is 100% totally fine. The problem is not everybody wants to. And that's trying to that's kind of what I'm trying to advocate here for on my channel. So I can totally respect that. Not everybody does necessarily care about strength. Um, I went through a phase where I was influenced to care about my strength from social media, mainly Instagram and YouTube, where you see all these crazy guys lifting ridiculous amounts of weights. 
and you're just kind of bombarded with all these numbers. So I went from my first year of lifting where I just trained pretty similar to how I actually do now as a more advanced lifter. And I turned into one of these barbell only care about my strength numbers types. And it was pretty much just pure peer pressure. Obviously, I was a little bit younger. I was kind of like late teens, maybe 20 when I kind of got out of that. But with that being said, I really got off track on what I was actually training for. So as soon as I stepped away from social media, I stopped caring and regained my focus on hypertrophy training. I bet a lot of lifters have been persuaded in a similar way, and this will lead to burnout because it led me to burnout because I wasn't actually lifting the way I wanted to. I was lifting the way that I saw everybody else do it online and I was getting bombarded just like you guys all are with a specific way of lifting. And that's just kind of how the social media algorithm works. I'm a big advocate of discovering what you want to achieve and not letting others decide that for you. And I'm really seeing this in that whole kind of aesthetics generation, which I know is kind of something that started a while back, but now it's, it's bad. It really is bad. I'm very glad I never went down that, but I did see a lot of it. It's very, very dogmatic is probably the best way to put it. So you need to decide what's best for you. It's your responsibility to be self-aware and figure out what your goals are. And you have to stick true that that's a sign of strength. That's something that you'll develop throughout your lifting career. So another point he has is power building, in his opinion, is the best way to train for natural lifters for size and strength. Muscle growth is achieved through a variety of different mechanisms that different pieces of equipment and different methods can assist with. Because there are so many useful tools, eliminating one is accepting a lesser version of training. So I do agree with this to an extent. Um, pursuing different methods simultaneously in a strategic manner is what makes an effective hypertrophy program. I do disagree that eliminating the big three lifts causes you to miss out on an entire method. And I know that wasn't necessarily his point there, but this is a point that I want to make. I do disagree that eliminating the big three lifts causes you to miss out on an entire method because you can translate the same principles that you use when you're doing those lifts for hypertrophy into more optimal lifts for muscle growth. A couple of examples I have here, and the examples I have are for the big three. This is gonna be dumbbell bench instead of barbell bench. This is gonna be Romania deadlifts instead of regular deadlifts. Reason being, a little bit more range of motion, a little bit more of a direct target, especially with the RDLs uh, than regular deadlifts. So targeting that hamstring a little bit more than a regular deadlift would, that would be um, what Stan Strength would say, a distribution of the tonnage throughout the lift. So another point he has is if you're a bodybuilder and your top priority is results and barbell movements contribute greatly to your results, why should they be taken out? So I agree with this. This is actually an awesome point and something that I probably could have done a better job of mentioning in my first video. Training results do vary from person to person. So if you are getting results and enjoying your training using these lifts and using barbells, I would actually advise you to keep them in your training. I'm against the one size fits all for lifting methods. If barbells are working for you, please keep them in your training. If you like doing them, please keep them in your training. I'm not anti barbell, I'm anti one size fits all. And I do think there are methods that I'm going to go over that I have gone over that I think are equivalent and even slightly better than barbell methods for hypertrophy. So another point he has is just bringing together the principles of powerlifting and bodybuilding doesn't mean you're going to get the best of both. Absolutely. A hundred percent. This is actually a pretty similar argument to my jack of all trades point. Basically, you'll get good results with power building, but I don't think it's optimal for hypertrophy and it actually can be a suboptimal use of your time and energy if that is your goal. And I know I've talked about this before, so I'm not going to waste time and go too in depth on that. Another one he has here is 
As long as you land on the curve between the two variables, you aren't going to get maximum size or maximum strength, but you can optimize your training to get the best of both. So yes, I do agree with this. You can have a, obviously there's, there's a curve. He had that great chart on his video, which I thought is just a really simple way to put everything. It won't be optimal, but you can get to a point where obviously depending on what your goal is, you can skew your training a little bit more towards each direction and actually get pretty good benefits from both. Um, at the end of the day, my argument is I'm on the farther side of hypertrophy. I'm not trying to be a power builder somewhere in between where he is. So if you guys need power, power building help or any advice for that, he's a very smart guy when it comes to that. I'm a little bit more of a hypertrophy focused guy. So to get back to this point, I do agree with this. And this is why power building is effective. I want to take this time to make it more clear that I'm not anti power building or powerlifting. I actually really like both. But I do want to reiterate my point by saying that power building is suboptimal for hypertrophy. It's good. It is good. <laughs> I'm not trying to say it's bad. When I advocate for one thing, I'm not saying other things don't work. Power building, yes, it is good for hypertrophy. But it's not the best because the strength focused work that you do will interfere with your hypertrophy training and even the mentality for some lifters. So that I think this goes a little bit beyond just the physical training. So mindset aside, because that's a that's a strange variable. Physically, yes, the strength training will affect your hypertrophy training. So that's why I'm saying it's not optimal for hypertrophy. Another point here that I have is it can affect your mentality because when you focus so heavily on strength numbers on one lift, it, it it's actually, and I've been here before, it's really hard for that very intense and exciting kind of like, like it's all, all in this moment, like you're pushing a bunch of weight and it's all in this one moment versus hypertrophy training is just spread out through a long course of time. It's hard for that mindset to not taint the rest of your hypertrophy lifts. I've been there. I've had a lot of training partners that are the same way. I've had clients that are kind of the same way. Um, Mindset's a tricky one because everybody has a completely different perception of themselves and reality and their training. So that's definitely not black and white whatsoever. It's very, um, it varies a ton is what I'm trying to say here. So next point we've got is strength is not exclusive to the squat bench and deadlift or to one rep maxes. Thank you so much for saying that. That is music to my ears. There are so many ways to get strong. I really do like that point. And I think we need to make this a little bit more common in the fitness community. Powerlifting is not the only way to get strong. I am so happy you made that point. So another one he has here is what about fully maximizing strength? Um, then he's basically comparing a high bar to a low bar squat and an arched bench to like a powerlifter, like a competition bench versus a more relaxed bodybuilding style or even just recreational lifting style uh, bench form. And are you using your technique to maximize your leverages or to apply the most tension to the target muscle? Uh, this is kind of a long point I have here, so I do have it written down. This is a really great point, and I'm glad you brought this up. I do think there's a difference between max leverage and max tension. Maximum tension and range of motion mostly depth or stretch of the muscle. And I will make a video on that. I already have it all planned out in the future. Um, for the target muscle is better in my opinion. That's why when I squat, I stick with high bar because it puts me in a mechanical disadvantage compared to low bar. This varies again from person to person, but I'm gluten hamstring dominant. So a high bar squat that tends to be more quad focused, especially for me is less advantageous for myself. This is the same exact thing for bench press. I now use a uh, very moderate grip, although I use, although I do bench pretty rarely. So I am chest dominant over my triceps. So I used to bench with a super wide grip to try and go heavier. Now when I do bench, even though it's pretty rare, I keep my elbows about 45 degrees, just outside shoulder width grip, a little bit more hypertrophy focus. So not mechanically advantageous, but definitely a pretty good happy medium. Let's find where I was. This is a long paragraph. So uh, for deadlifts, that's why I use Romania deadlifts instead of sumo. I was sumo deadlifting over 600 pounds. And when I do RDLs, 
I can probably use less than 300, if that makes sense. So that's why I prefer those. I'm in a mechanically disadvantaged position, and a lot of the tension, as I said earlier, goes right into the hamstrings versus dispersed throughout my body. I know this video that he made, so stand strength response video, was released before I made my video about uh, using versus abusing progressive overload, but my points in that video really do cover my opinion on this. In my opinion, if you are hypertrophy focused in your training, you're playing with fire by using these big three lifts as the main source of tracking strength progression. I won't speak further on why because I already have my thoughts articulated in that video, and I recommend watching it. It's called Using vs. Abusing Progressive Overload. And I'm not trying to like plug my own video again here or anything, but I do highly suggest watching that because I think this is a crucial point that he makes, and that video gives a really good insight into what my thoughts are and how I train. The big three... All right, so this is one of his next points. The big three are the best in theory. If that's true, then why do people promote dumbbells, cables, and machines as alternatives? This is something I need to be a little bit more clear on. I will take responsibility for not articulating that in the best way that I could. Um, I could use the excuse of that was my first video, but I'm not going to do that. This is kind of a learning curve for me. So to be more precise with what I mean by this, I think either saying that the big three are the best at first glance, that would be a much better way than saying in theory in case we get technical here, or even that they're the best on paper would be better ways to put it. Just because statistically something seems to be better than something else, it doesn't guarantee it will have the best outcome when put in practice. You see this happen in sports all the time. And keep in mind, this isn't a direct correlation to lifting, but this is something that can give you an idea of what I'm trying to say here. So don't take this too, too literally. You do see this happen in sports all the time. The team with the best stats on paper doesn't necessarily win the championship that they have in that sport. It's actually quite the opposite. They win more often than most other teams, but they do not win every time. And that's the critical point that I'm trying to make with this argument. So don't take that too literally. It's just a way for you to understand my point here a little bit better. The people that promote dumbbells, cables, and machines are all smart and experienced advanced lifters. There's a lot of people that really don't know what they're talking about that do promote this stuff. I'm not talking about those guys. The classic fake natty you see on Instagram, I'm not talking about those guys. You probably have an idea of who I'm talking about, but not the laundry lists, cable everything, take steroids and don't train hard type. There's two different types of lifters that are pro cable, pro machine, and pro dumbbell, 100%. I'll give a couple examples later in this video. The people that promote dumbbells, cables, and machines are all smart and experienced lifters. They're the people that have put these lifts that are best at first glance to test for a long time. And in the end, they can look back and make a much better assessment. So a point Dr. Mike from Renaissance Periodization made on his recent video was that most lifters that are anti-cables and machines are, and I'm just going to quote him here because I, I think it's pretty funny and I think we can all kind of have a laugh at this. Most people that are anti-cables, machines, and dumbbells are five foot nine, hundred forty pound intermediates, which I think is just hilarious because it's very true. <laughs> like, think about all those like guys that post all the Gymshark stuff on their Instagram, and I'm not trying to call out anybody in particular here, but this is the way they train. I I was kind of like that before. I wasn't one hundred forty pounds, but I was an intermediate. I was a uh, loved barbells, all this kind of stuff. Um, not that, and it wasn't that I just loved barbells, it was that I thought machines literally couldn't grow you muscle. And a lot of people are still like this, and that's the further I got into lifting, the more I realized this, that's why I'm making this video. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll admit I was kind of like that. So this is, yeah, like I said, kind of why I'm doing this. We, we, all, we all go through a learning curve. Um, another point he makes is as content creators, when we say something is better or the best, what we are actually trying to say is what's worked for us. Unfortunately, the responsibility does still fall onto the viewer to experiment and draw your own conclusions. So I think I've probably been uh, on the other side of this in the past where you kind of take what somebody's saying as the end all be all. Um, 
sometimes it can be difficult to advocate for something and remember to constantly say, my method's, my method's the best, but it's not that much better than anything else, and it's not necessarily the best for everybody. So that's a really, really good point because obviously I just started making videos literally last week. So that's something that I probably should focus more on because I've been the viewer before and I've been there and I don't want to just kind of fall for whatever. So I agree. This is very important for viewers to know. That's all I'm going to say for that. The next one he has is this one isn't actually a response to one of my arguments, but it's going to be Eugene Tio or Tao. I'm Stan Strength. I'm on the same boat as you. I do not know how to say his name. You kind of had me second guessing there. So his point is that if the big three are overrated, then whatever you promote will eventually just become the same thing. So this is a good point. The reason things become viewed as black and white so often in fitness is because there aren't any reliable metrics to measure and compare methods outside of personal experience. I do disagree with the argument that if we accept that barbells are overrated, then the new method will become overrated. The point I'm trying to make, and what seems like others are trying to make, is that these lifts are all very similar for results and have their own pros and cons. Everything is a little bit of a double-edged sword, and we're trying to take barbells out of the limelight and view them as equal, not necessarily inferior. Again, I do prefer dumbbells, cables, and machines generally, but this is where the non-black and white thinking needs to come into play so we can view everything as much closer to equal. If dumbbells, cables, and machines give you A-plus results and barbells give you A-minus results, barbells are still an incredible option. They just, not, they just might not be quite the most optimal. Another one he's got here is once you max out, a machine or a cable and hit a plateau with that style of training, a, bar a barbell will sometimes be what you need to break through it and continue to grow. So this is where I get into not necessarily a disagreement, but I think this is where maybe my slightly more experience with hypertrophy training will come into play so I can help you guys out a little bit here. Um, this can be true, especially since you will still have some novelty gains to make on these lifts. I do disagree with this mindset being the biggest factor for hypertrophy training, though. This is one of my main arguments against strength focus for hypertrophy training. If hypertrophy is your primary goal, you need to be accumulating volume over time, and that's going to be the primary thing to focus on. Progression is still important for muscle growth, but it should be secondary to quality volume accumulation that quality being volume that includes the fundamentals of hypertrophy training. In my opinion, progressive overload is the outcome, not the cause. If you hit a plateau on a lift, you can still get bigger using it, but not necessarily stronger. So I agree that novelty does increase gains, but that will be primarily strength gains. If you switch or rotate your lifts for hypertrophy when you hit a plateau on strength, you are shortchanging yourself from an opportunity to keep accumulating high quality volume on hypertrophy focused lift that you are good at already. So I'm not going to try and finish that off with anything. I think that says a lot in itself. You don't need to shock the muscle or confuse the muscle to grow is another point that he made. 100% agreed. This is totally suboptimal. You won't accumulate high quality volume. Um, it's, you can still get results kind of just going into the gym and smashing a muscle and doing what you want. Definitely not going to be optimal. So if you really don't care about programming or anything, um, you can go ahead and do that. It's <laughs> probably going to give you maybe 60 or 70% optimal results, but I would advise against it. I've been there before. It's definitely not the best. If something is overrated, depends on where you're at in your training is another point he makes. Yes, I agree with this. Barbells are better for beginners than intermediate or advanced lifters for hypertrophy. However, I do want to say that barbells have been heavily promoted for hypertrophy over any other method of lifting. So I do think for the past few years, they are overrated in general. They're not bad lifts, as I stated earlier, but they are not superior to dumbbells or machines and cables, in my opinion. Another one we're going on... Um, 
he's kind of arguing against my best in theory, and then I go into the jack of all trades and how you're limited by your weakest link. He says, if they aren't optimal because you're limited by your weakest link, how will you know what your weakest link is without using a barbell lift? And I think from here, he's just kind of arguing as basically more of a, coming from more of a curiosity standpoint. So my response to this is, you don't necessarily need to know what your weakest link is because your physique is customizable and it's subjective. You aren't trying to get as strong as possible, you're trying to get stronger. There is a big difference between the two. So he said, uh, maybe a way to do this is just looking at your physique to check for the, for the weakest link. How can you know without doing these lifts? So my response would be, in my opinion, strength numbers don't really matter for hypertrophy. So a couple examples that pretty much instantly came to mind would be, uh, there's a couple channels. There's one, Jeffrey Verity Schofield, definitely check him out. Awesome channel, great lifter, great advice. And then natural hypertrophy is another one. Uh, these guys are super jacked natural lifters, um, but they aren't particularly strong. And I'm not saying that to attack them. I'm using it as more of a comparison because they have arguably better physiques than I do. I personally think that they have better physiques than I do. Maybe some people would prefer mine. Some people would prefer theirs. Um, they are definitely a little bit bigger than me. So I'm going to give them kind of the benefit of the doubt here. And this is where my argument comes into play. So these guys are bigger than me. The problem here, and this is my viewpoint, is like my, my strength is way higher than theirs. And th this is kind of the point that I'm getting to here is that even though even though the, all three of us were progressing on strength and have been progressing on strength for a long time, they were still getting stronger, but they were doing it at a much slower rate. I was deadlifting over 600, squatting mid to high fours, benching 330 with a pause, and they were still much bigger than I was. I don't know what their strength numbers are off the top of my head, but the last I checked, I, I was much stronger, but somehow they're much bigger. You know, it's just... Uh, I think that proves my argument pretty well here. So you should be assessing muscle size and proportions. But if you did want to know strength-wise what your weakest link was, I do think the big three and variations are good for assessing that. A uh, quick example here, and obviously powerlifters, you're going to be very familiar with this, and you'll probably understand this even better than I do. Um, for squats, if, you, if you're stronger on a high bar squat than a low bar squat, you're probably quad dominant. If you squat that or low bar and you can put up more weight, you're probably more back glute, a little bit of hamstring dominant. Overall, more hip dominant. Um, quick example should be good for that. So another one he has here is, this is something that he is asking as a curious observer. I do want to make this clear because I don't want to paint him as somebody that's trying to say he's right or whatever. He's asking this out of curiosity. If a lift hits your muscles hard and you can progressively overload in a, in a reliable way, and he said any lift here, a machine or a barbell, if you're so focused on optimally hitting the muscles and avoiding fatigue, does that replace the need to work hard? And he says that he does not think so. I said, I 100% agree that just because you can target a muscle more by doing a more direct lift, it does not replace the need to train hard. In hypertrophy, the fundamentals of training hard are going to be volume, proximity to failure, exercise selection, and training frequency. You can apply all of those fundamentals to lifts that are less taxing and get the same exact results. For example, a plate-loaded machine row will grow your back just as much as a barbell row in my opinion, possibly even more, but that's besides the point. If these two lifts get you the same results, then choosing the one that saves your energy and requires less stabilization of the other muscles is superior. Energy expenditure is not something that is in line with hypertrophy, and it actually can be something that prevents you from getting your optimal training in for hypertrophy. Then you can actually put even more emphasis on your target muscle, and you will save overall fatigue in the meantime. It is good to have full body strength foundations, that's why I do recommend barbells and lots of compound movements for beginners, because I think being able to use your body as one, improving your overall strength and just having full body coordination is absolutely crucial. You can't just start off with machines and cables. I will talk about that more in the future. To get back to my point, 
the less fatigued you are, the more consistent your progressive overload on these lifts will be, and the more effort and focus you can apply to the lifts that follow in that workout. Muscle building is long term and you need to be mindful of fatigue accumulation over time because you won't get optimal results if you train fatigued long term. This is super important for minimizing mental and physical burnout long term. Another massive benefit of the style of training is that it makes recovery very easy. If you have a busy lifestyle or even just have a busy day or can't sleep one night or nutrition's off, that doesn't nearly affect your training and result as much as if you needed more recovery by doing these more fatiguing and taxing workouts. At the end of the day, the other small benefits you'll get from doing the barbell row aren't necessary for hypertrophy anyways. So in my opinion, the machine row wins. I would actually highly suggest machines and cables for powerlifters as an accessory movement in order to better manage fatigue and to build muscle mass. So I hope that was a solid and valuable response to a lot of people. Um, I know it's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of points that I think are valuable that he made. I think I made a couple valuable points back, but either way, that's all I got for today. If you have any questions, definitely let me know down below. I will potentially make a part two to this, depending on what the next 45 minutes of his video are. But with that being said, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.